Hello again. Welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Between Lands Spotlight Tutorial Series. So today we're going to be talking about events. Um, things like the rain, the thunderstorms, just going over them. It's going to be a bit of a shorter episode, um, but just covering all the different variety that is present within the Between Lands. Um, because there is a lot of different weather effects that can happen, uh, some of which will happen you know, at the same time. Uh, so first up, we have the dense fog event. That's this right here. We're going to have this very, very thick fog uh, that kind of adds like a sense of like an eerie atmosphere to the Between Lands. It does make things very, very hard to see, um, you know, very far ahead of you um, within the Between Lands. And uh, it does make things a bit spooky because you do see these, uh, these silhouettes of eyes and things off in the distance. Um, now, in addition, you'll notice right there at the left, you can see kind of a silhouette of a person uh, with his hands up. But those are called them, um, is what they've, what they've grown to be known as uh, within the Between Lands. Um, so, they don't actually do anything. They just add like a layer of atmosphere. They are a bit creepy. And uh, sometimes they can be a bit spooky when you're going across the marsh and you kind of see these people uh, kind of raising up out of the mist, right? Next up, let's take a look at the blood sky. You'll start hearing this really, really weird sound effects. Um, and you'll know the blood sky because the sky is going to turn red. Now, the spook event that happens, um, you know, around Halloween, which we're going to talk about towards the end of the episode, kind of the seasonal events, does look somewhat familiar, uh, but you'll know this one by the soundtrack and everything. Um, and this one is going to change up gameplay a bit um, because it allows Swamp Hags and Peep Mummies to spawn more. And Swamp Hags are going to be able to spawn everywhere. Um, so you're going to have a lot more Swamp Hags during this event. And in addition, on top of that, they are stronger, uh, the ones that spawn from this event. So you can see here, uh, this one, you can see it's going to take quite a few hits. And in addition, they are going to move a bit faster. So if we find one, uh, like right over here, you can see how fast they move now. <laughs> um, they do kind of get with it as far as moving. And then in addition, there will be some structures that can spawn. Um, they're not overly common, um, but you will sometimes see them. And they'll be made of mud tiles, and they only spawn during this event. And inside they can spawn crypt crawlers, but after the event is over, they will the entire structure will despawn. These right here, uh, if you recall, we saw these when we were going through the uh, sludge dungeon, and these will naturally spawn um, while the blood sky event's going on. And then once the blood sky event ends, they will shut down. So it is going to cause some crypt crawlers to spawn. They're not overly common. It's not something that I would concern yourself with too much. Uh, usually, you're not going to see a ton of these things, um, but as long as they're up, they will spawn Crypt Crawlers. Now, next up, we have the Auroras event. Uh, this is the event that actually causes these, like, uh, these Auroras, <laughs> basically, to spawn in the sky. And you'll notice these, and it's a fairly common weather event to happen, but the nice thing is this weather event is what's going to allow you to capture wisps um, in like normal areas because normally if you're familiar with between lands you know that whenever you get close to wisps they will vanish uh, but as long as the auroras event is going on this is when you can go up and you can harvest wisps so uh, you'll definitely want to be on a lookout for wisps when this event's going on if you want those because they do make some really cool decorative features and they're of course they're used for the spirit tree boss now next up we have the heavy rain event. Uh, this one is fairly common once again. Uh, while it is raining you will see puddles start to build up and we'll talk a little bit more about these when we get into the farming mechanics because these puddles will destroy your crops. That's why when it comes to farming in the between lands, um, I know I've mentioned this in Let's Plays before, don't farm outdoors because you're asking to have all your crops ruined because the first time it comes in and it rains, boom, it's going to destroy all your crops. So you want to kind of be aware of that and, uh, you know, that's the main thing about puddles is they are great at destroying crops. 
Now, in addition, you are going to see these little structures spawn in your world uh, during this event. In this case, they're not going to be uh, spawning crypt crawlers, but they are going to be spawning sludge worms. Uh, so just be aware that these are a thing and you will encounter these during the heavy rains. Now, in addition, whenever it is raining, uh, on occasion, not all that uncommon, you will come across uh, thunderstorms. And, you know, we talked about these in the last episode of it, um, but during a thunderstorm, you are going to see sparks building up on the ground. Yeah, right over here, you can see some sparks starting, and this spot right here is about to get hit by lightning. Now, this will cause a fire, and this will cause damage, so I would avoid it uh, unless you're, you know, farming for specific items. You want to kind of avoid that lightning strike. Also, you have to be aware of it maybe doing some damage to your house or something, um, though, since it is raining, it's not going to do a ton of damage. But it can cause a little fire that, depending, can be an issue. Um, under certain circumstances. Now, in addition, this thunderstorm is how you are going to get a few things. Um, you know, we talked about, in the last episode, we talked about getting our uh, our lightning chiral malls um, to time. We also talked about the lightning chiral barb eruptor. And then, in addition, if you want lightning arrows, throwing any kind of arrow into a lightning strike and letting you get hit by lightning will create you your lightning arrows, which we'll talk a little bit more about those later. Now, next up, you'll hear this kind of cracking sound. That's the rift opening up. This is another event which causes the day-night cycle of the overworld to kind of peek into the between lands. And whenever you're traveling, like right now, I don't have night vision on. When you're traveling in the between lands, if the rift is not open, um, that's when you'll notice that the between lands becomes extremely dark because, uh, of course, if you look up in the sky, there is no sun, there is no moon in the between lands. So between lands, it's um, light. You know, you normally associate it maybe with it being day or something like that. What it is, is it's the rift being open, allowing light from the overworld in. And the rift can be a ton of different sizes, and it can be, um, you know, you can actually sit in the between lands. You can see the sunset or the sunrise. You can see, um, you know, all different kinds of things happening. You can see the night sky from the overworld while in the between lands. Uh, so this event is just going to happen, and it's what's going to allow uh, some light into the between lands and make it a little bit nicer navigating than whenever it's not open. Um, and just as an example, if we were to turn this off and we shut down the rift, you can see that it gets incredibly dark. This is the normal between lands, you know, like with no night vision. This is what it would normally look like uh, if the rift is not open. Now, last up, we have the seasonal events. Uh, first up, we have the spook event, which you'll notice that it changes a lot of the textures within the between lands. Uh, you actually end up with these almost like, I don't know, creeping tentacles where the tree roots would normally be. And everything kind of takes this like really Halloween look with the purples and the oranges um, as far as the color palettes go. Um, and this is what it looks like if the Halloween event is enabled in the configs and it is Halloween. Um, get the exact date for you here. October 22nd to October 31st. This is what the Between Lands looks like um, when it's kind of you know, in this effect. Now you can turn this effect on and anytime you want to do effects, you can just do um, slash BL and then auto field to event and you can disable, enable, list, off, on, toggle um, and then you can say like on, tab and then tab and you can tab through these. So you'll have all the events available. Um, now in addition to the block palettes changing, um, you know, you'll notice all the fog in the in the distance there and if you look up one of the coolest things and you may not notice this uh, Unless you actually happen to look up if we look up we can see a giant jack-o-lantern up in the sky um, And then in addition the soundtrack and stuff will change um, But mostly I mean there's nothing as far as gameplay that's gonna be any different You're gonna have that giant jack-o-lantern and you're gonna have a lot of texture changes and things like that during this event, so if you ever come in the Between Lands and see everything that has gone purple, um, just know that it's not a bug, it is the Between Lands spook event. So, 
that is what's going on here. Everything kind of takes on this orange look. Here's uh, kind of a blood type uh, wood that's going on with the sap trees. Um, now lastly, we have two events that kind of happen. They, they coincide and work together. Uh, first up, you have the winter event. This is what it looks like during the winter event. This is kind of like the spook event where it happens based on the time of year, of course, real lifetime. Uh, and this is go going to coincide with the month of December. During December, unless it's disabled, this is what the Between Lands looks like. Uh, you will notice it's a bit brighter, um, though still a, can be kind of dark if the rift isn't open, but you can see a lot easier than when the rift is normally closed. Um, and then in addition, there is just pretty much the entire uh, dimension sees a revamp as far as its textures and things um, with a lot of blues and whites and uh, whatnot. There's also different soundtracks that play in the background. And if you watch right here, you can see that the water, the swamp water around this area will start to freeze. And this can only happen, and this is actually a very unique block because it is only obtainable during the month of December. And this is black ice. Uh, this is specific to Between Lands Winter um, for, for you to be able to get this. Now, sadly, there's no way to really keep black ice because if you place it, um, you know, after the event, it is going to melt and it's going to melt back into swamp water. Uh, so just bear that in mind. But it is a unique block that happens during this event. Uh, this is mossy crag rock top. I love some of the textures uh, that happen during this event. They just look totally different. I do wish there was a way to get the textures from the spook event and the winter events and like have like a decorative version that's like lasts all year would be kind of cool because some of these are just absolutely gorgeous uh, like to build with and stuff um, but they only are present during this event now in addition there's a few other things uh, first up if we were to spawn a white during this event uh, you will notice that he kind of looks like Santa Claus uh, he kind of has the red outfit and everything um, also Whenever you kill mobs in this area, in the Between Lands, they can drop mince pies, uh, which is just like an additional food type. Uh, and lastly, when you are exploring during the, uh, during the winter event, there is a chance that you may come across presents. Um, and these are not overly common, and they can only spawn during this event. But if we break these, you can see we get some mince pies. Uh, you can get some other things from them, and they can come in a variety of colors, as you can see here. I love those volar pads. Man, I wish I had these for, like, just building purposes. Uh, but you can see there's some candy canes, uh, which is another food type. There is the frosty disc, uh, which is going to be some of the music that you hear in the background during this event. Um, and there is uh, Christmas pudding uh, that's coming from... Box. So you can get some additional food types and a chance to get those discs. And then you can also get coal. If you're unlucky, you'll get coal from presents. Uh, and then the last event, and this one will only happen during the winter event, so only during the month of December, um, and will oftentimes replace uh, the rainfall and stuff. You won't really have rain uh, that comes to mind during the winter event. But instead, you're going to get some snowfall. Uh, you're going to bring snow to the Between Lands, which is going to cause snow to fall and pile up, just like in the Overworld. Uh, so you can actually see the Between Lands as almost a winter wonderland that happens right before your very eyes. And that pretty much covers all the different events and some things to be aware of. Um, you know, like I said, there's some unique mobs that spawn in some of them. There's unique items that you can craft during, like, thunderstorms. Um, you know... The majority of the Between Lands weather conditions will have some unique things tied to them. And I'm not going to show off every biome for like the winter and the Halloween events because it kind of makes you uh, get out there and explore it. But uh, you can see that there is a ton of work that's went into the seasonal events. And probably some of my favorite seasonal events from any mod, um, truth be told, because it's not like radical changes. Um, like something like Lycanites does, but 
it's just kind of a fun change and you get to see the between lands in ways that you don't normally get to see it in uh, which is pretty nifty so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode i hope you guys learned something new um, about the the weather conditions and things uh, within this mod and uh, if you guys did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out next episode we're going to be talking about some deeper mechanics uh, we've pretty much covered all the exploration in the world um, of the between lands up to this point and so now we get to start covering things like farming and alchemy and um, covering all the different weapons and the different machines and things uh, that you can make within the between lands so i hope you guys join me for next time until then as always do take care stay safe and I'll see you guys next time.